engineer at Intercom, where pretty much day to day I use Ember. Um, so just talk about Glimmer. Um, so last week at Emberconf, Glimmer was announced. Um, it was generally favorably, uh, uh, a lot of people liked it, but there's a bit of confusion around it, so I'm just giving a short talk about it. It's quite a small library, and um, so yeah, just a whistle stop tour. Um, so. <coughs> So generally when a new library comes out, you, this, the trolls come out with this sort of thing. Um, and that's generally down to JavaScript fatigue, which is, is pretty well warranted these days. Uh, everyone kind of getting the cold shakes when a new framework comes out. Um, so is Glimmer new? Uh, yes and no. It's kind of confusing, but I'll, I'll explain. So Ember, while it's generally viewed as a monolith, it's actually a kind of an opinionated stack of lots of little libraries. And Glimmer is the view layer of Ember, which was kind of emerged kind of last year. Um, so if you think of MVC, Ember is the V, um, similar to like React. Um, so this is a new shift in the direction of where Ember is going. So I'll kind of explain a bit about what that is. Um, so if you wanted to get started with it, so what it is, it's a component library. So Ember, while well, it's opinionated, uh, out of box, we have a CLI tool. So similar to Angular CLI, Vue CLI, um, create React app. Um, so you install Ember CLI. If you want to create a Ember new my app, and instead you, call, you have this thing called a blueprint. So what we want to do is we want to create a Glimmer app, not an Ember app, a Glimmer app. Um, so this allows us to create this component frame, uh, library app. Um, and then to start the development server, you have CD and then Ember Serve, which gives you a, a, a development server with a library load, all that's correct. Um, and as with Ember, you get an opinionated, I think Angular is the same, where you get an opinionated kind of directory structure. Um, it's a lot there, don't need to worry about it, but the main thing is the UI directory, and inside that is your components. And in this case, we create an app called uh, My App, and we have a component file which is a JS file and a template file. So remember, we, we don't kind of follow the same way of kind of view and React where you have things in the same file. We, we split them apart. Um, and also notice that um, similar files are in the same location. So that's called the, the pods layout. So rather than have things in you know, all your templates in the templates directory, you know, kind of JS components in the JS components file. Um, and it, works with TypeScript out of the box. So one of the big contentions with Ember is that they have their own kind of um, object model. And it feels like sometimes you're actually not using JavaScript. It just feels like you're using Ember. Um, and that's a kind of a big complaint. But using TypeScript, it feels a lot more native. Um, it uses handlebars, which is that mustache syntax. Um, there's probably some JSX in here somewhere. So. But yeah, I, I like handlebars. It's all right. <laughs> Um, so I don't know if you can see that. Um, so basically this is, sorry that is all in white, I couldn't be arsed syntax highlighting it. Um, so here we are creating a new component and it, all it is is an ES6 class, extending the components. We have um, properties with types, we have constructors, and most importantly we have getters and setters because currently in Ember another pain point is that you have to do this.get, this.set, whereas now we can just do this property name and the same with functions, you just don't get. So if we have a template up here, <coughs> we're outputting first name, last name, and then similarly, full name, which is the combination of um, first and last name. And that's what it looks like. You the cats? You the cats. Um, so also just the, <coughs> the concept of arguments versus properties. So when you use Glimmer, you want to know, you want to reason about your code. So the concept of arguments, or arguments are things passed in, whereas properties are, um, you know, state in your prop in your component. So, sorry for this small slide, but basically, um, when you pass in components, you prefix it with an at, and that tells you that this is uh, 
you know, a, a, an argument, um, and it dis differentiates it from HTML properties or um, you know click handlers or you know stuff like that. If you want to, um, and then <coughs> in your template, if you want to access these passing properties, you call this dot args and prop uh, argument name. Whereas um, you know internal internal properties, you just do this dot whatever the pro uh, property name is. And then similarly in your templates, you prefix. If you want to access an argument, you just prefix it with an at, and um, internal ones you don't. Uh, same thing. So that's a child component. Um, so this is a big one. It uses unidirectional data flow. So forever, Ember, <coughs> Ember has been using and still does two-way data binding. When you first see that two-way data binding, it blows your mind. It's the best shit ever. But then if you work day to day in a big app, and um, two-way data binding straight from hell. Um, <laughs> and it's very hard to track down bugs when you have code here being manipulated by some random thing up there. So React people and other people have been hollering with this for a long time, but now this is part of the, the Glimmer library. And it's um, basically just two rules. The two rules are basically everything to start with is immutable. Um, and if you want to make stuff editable, you have to um, tell it that this is an editable property. So for example, we have first name, last name. And if I try to edit them in my code, I actually get a console error saying, you can't edit this. So how, it, how you make it editable is you use what's called a, a decorator. So I believe Angular has this, but this is a um, TC39 um, stage two thing so to give your code hints. And so basically by adding attract, it tells your code that this can be updated. And this is what makes re-rendering really fast in Ember because by default, everything is immutable, but this internal bug key can um, it knows exactly like what, what to update if things are going to be updated. Um, kind of the last feature is just actions. These are you know, how you make your apps interactive, so to react to um, you know, click handlers. <coughs> so here we have, we're just toggling, we have a function called toggle image, and it just um, modifies uh, a property called show image, just turns it, just, you know, turns it on and off. And in our template, we have a, an if else in handlebar syntax, and we're just you know, showing an image and hiding an image. And then at the bottom, we have the on click handler, and that we're just passing the function in. Um, so if you have um, multiple components, and you can, you can pass this function in multiple layers down through like a grandchild, or if you call it at the bottom level, it'll be called in the context of where it was defined. So this adheres to um, kind of one-way data flow. So that's basically it. Ship it. <laughs> um, so out of the box, if you build a Hello World app, Glimmer comes in at about like 30K compared to like the full-on Ember, which is like 200K. Um, at the moment, the only one that's kind of beating it is, uh, I believe that's Preact, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this, so why is, <coughs> is this happening? Because traditionally Ember, people wouldn't look at Ember because it's such a big kind of heavy opinionated framework. And if someone, as DH, DHH would say, I just want to put spring, Java, sprinkles, Java sprinkles on my site, they'd never look at Ember. They'd rather go to like uh, React or Vue or something like that. So this, by pulling this out, Ember is trying to kind of move that way where that people can start just using Glimmer without Ember at all. And then over time, if their app gets more complex, they can pull in more bits. Um, so at the moment, only Glimmer has been kind of extra extracted, but over time, they're going to be pulling out more bits, and it should be a good story if you were going from a, you know, server rendered page with this to like a full scale app. And Shina will, and there's some notes. But thank you. That was not five minutes. <laughs>